In today's video we're going to replace the brake rotors on a 2006 Pontiac G6. The rotors on this vehicle are severely warped. I'm going to do a quick uh, shot before we actually do the procedure of the symptoms that you, you will see if you have severely warped rotors like what we have in this vehicle here. This is a relatively inexpensive job. It's August of 2017. I bought the two rotors. Taxes included, Canadian dollars. Uh, ninety dollars and a few cents. You'll notice as I hit the brake I think you can see the pulsation on the brake in my foot there and maybe even here in the front end it's very warped. Before you start the procedure take the uh, cap off your brake fluid reservoir because when we retract the pads into the caliper the fluid level is going to go up in here. Safely support the vehicle. We can see I have the jack stand here but I have the vehicle blocked here and I just put just a bit of weight, drop the jack down a little bit just so that the weight is resting on that uh, on my blocks underneath the lower control arm. So, recently, I actually have a video on this, I've replaced the brake pads. So we're not going to be replacing the brake pads in this video, just the rotor. Um, place your C-clamp strategically on the brake pad in here. You see where the end of it is resting on the brake pad. But you want to be very careful in behind because there's a fair bit going on right in this little area. And you want to make sure that the clamp is against the steel of the brake caliber not on the back of this flex hose and you want to watch out for this bleeder valve. Now we're going to start turning the C-clamp forcing those brake pads into the caliper so that there's going to be lots of room for us to put our new thicker rotor on. Notice I'm holding the clamp here. I don't think you can see on the outside, but I'm, I'm turning this righty tighty. Uh, righty tighty. It's well, it's not really coming into play there. Oh, anyway, as I say, there's relatively new pads on this vehicle, so I'm not going to have to retract them too far. And I loosen up my C clamp, and we can see lots of space in here. And the rotor is now loose. Our uh, caliper mounting bolts, 15 millimeter. I've got my saw, my ratchet set in here for uh, Lefty Lucy to loosen them up. A little bit uh, tight space here. Anyway, let's see if I can keep the camera rolling here. And loosen that off. There we go. So that's the top. Mounting bolt, we'll just loosen that off a bit, then we'll go to the bottom, loosen that off a bit, and go back and forth. Just to get your bearings here, that's our caliper mounting bolt, that's our slider pins here, there's our bolt, that, uh, bolt for the caliper slider pins. Let's do the bottom mounting bolt. I've turned the steering wheel to the left, because I couldn't really get a shot of this, but, so that's no problem. Uh, we can, uh, may have to turn the steering wheel again back when we're done to get the wheel back on. But at any rate, here's my wrench, 15 millimeter on our caliper mounting bolt right there. And the ratchet is set for Lefty Lucy. Again, here's the rear of the caliper and the uh, caliper slider pin bolt right there. I'll loosen that up. Get that top bolt out of there. Let's just slide ahead like that. And let's get a couple of more turns on that bottom caliper mounting bolt. That should slide off pretty easy. Take that over there. I'm going to stick a tie wrap through here and put it up to the strut just to keep it from falling. We're lucky here, sometimes these rotors can be seized on. 
not at all in this case slides right off I'm gonna clean that crap there with a wire brush maybe give it a sp spray with some brake cleaner these rotors are shipped with some kind of a preservative over them to keep them from getting rusty I'm gonna give that a little rub there and then spray some brake cleaner on it to get rid of that gunk now we put the new rotor on I like to put my uh, caliper manding bolts in place just so I'm not fumbling around looking for them obviously not poking into the hole like that just back like that and then we slide our caliper into place and move it around and we get those one of those bolts start turning our bolts righty tighty get one of them in there okay the bottom one is in place and then I'll get move the top around do the same thing Got the bolt seated now. Tighten up that top one. And the bottom one is also seated there. Get those tightened up and we're pretty much done. There we go. Now we just gotta pump our brake pedal and get the pressure back on the pads. Put the cap back on your master cylinder at this point. I just pumped the brakes so we can see we can't move that caliper around anymore easily because the pads are now gripped against the rotor. Start the vehicle and then just slowly pump your brakes back. You have a lot more power with the vehicle running on your brakes because the power brakes are in effect. So keep doing that to seat the brake pads against the new rotor. And when you have full pedal, like I can feel now, I have the full pr pressure back in the pedal, uh, take it for a test run. Always be cautious after doing any brake work to uh, be careful when you take it for that first ride drive afterwards. So here we are at highway speeds, taking that ramp. You'll notice considerable difference now with the rotors changed. No pulsation at all. Nice steady braking. No brake pulsation.